That's an effective democratic strategy. Unfortunately, I don't know how much attention people are going to pay to this, but this was an unmitigated disaster. People died needlessly here. They did nothing to secure Libya after the overthrow of Gaddafi. And a disaster is what, is what unfolded. And, you know, since that operation, you know, now being counted by Clinton as a, as a model operation in her 2012 speech to the U.N., the U.S. Embassy was closed. Libya's collapsed, turned into a terrorist safe haven. You know, they established that in the entire Libya debacle, not just the attacks, the disintegration of a country. That, that was her achievement, if you want to call it that. She owns Libya as a foreign policy failure. She's the, you know, de facto Democratic nominee for president. On the Republicans, in spite of what whatever way the Democrats spin this, I'd wrap this around her, you know, for the whole entire election. Jim Jordan was particularly powerful, you know, showing that, well, hey, there was no evidence at all. And you even said yourself it wasn't related to a YouTube video. She said it herself to the Egyptian prime minister. In other words, that whole narrative was a lie started by her. And her answer was dishonest. Jordan pointed out that the experts knew the truth. Greg Hicks, we had Victoria Tunsing, Hicks's lawyer, on yesterday. He knew the truth. He said, what troubles me the most is you knew the truth, Jordan said. She didn't tell the truth. And even more devastating, Jordan uh, pointed out, Hillary told her the families the night of the attack that they were killed by an al-Qaeda-like group. And she told the Libyan president it was a terrorist attack. The next day, she said it to the Egyptian prime minister that we know it had nothing to do with a, 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 a video or a film. It was a planned attack. It wasn't a protest. She knew it that day and the next day. And that's not what she told you, the American people. She decided to lie, cover up her failure. And today, she was exposed as a liar. That's the highlight of today. One of the more outrageous things she did during a testimony was, you know, trying to play on us was, you know, what she's trying to do to us, you know, claims she accepts responsibility. Yes, she doesn't accept responsibility, but then she says, I never saw the security requests. You know, it's an empty phrase. It's a ploy to escape really taking responsibility. She wants credit for taking responsibility and then none of the credit for the consequences of everything that went wrong. Now, Congressman Pompeo, highlighted the fact that despite the almost criminal negligence of what happened here, no person was ever fired. No one's pay was docked. Nothing was done. She could lamely insist that, well, it's a process we put in place. She looks like a robot up there all day, just regurgitating the talking points her lawyers told her to repeat. The other thing she's trying to pull off is to argue that Chris Stevens and others well, they knew they were undertaking a dangerous operation. It was like 19th century diplomacy. He went over there on a ship. He had to be willing to take risks, and he knew he might have a risk of dying. What does that have to do with not providing security? What does that have to do with a stand-down order? What does that have to do with, a, with, a, with an elaborate lie after the fact? Chris Stevens didn't have to die. Neither did the other three. He died because... The administration, Hillary Clinton, the State Department, failed to give them the protection they were begging for, the protection he deserved, the protection he needed. And it was almost like a grotesque quality to what she's trying to do, like wash her hands of the disaster by saying, well, he, they all knew that they were getting themselves into. You know, you had to go over on a, on a ship through Greece or whatever she said. You know, she te testified today that the State Department didn't have the amount of money that we thought would be necessary to do what was required to protect everyone. What? Then pull them out. That's a false argument. The State Department official, Charlene Lamb, has already testified before the House Oversight Committee that budget cuts had nothing to do with the security decisions in Benghazi. And speaking of budgets, congressional Democrats don't blink an eye when it comes to spending hundreds of billions of dollars, you know on everything else that they want in the world. Well, all of a sudden, they found a way to be frugal. It's unbelievable. Now they're tightwads. This exchange with Adam Smith, 
to provide cover for Hillary. Have we learned anything substantively about uh, new about Benghazi? Seriously? No. I was against this committee in the first place. That's when Trey Gowdy dressed him down, laid him out. Chairman Gowdy, I got to tell you something, his opening statement was spectacular. You know, he pointed out that everything that Hillary would say about the ARB, the State Department, handpicked members of the ARB, never interviewed Hillary, never reviewed her emails. I mean, think about that. Secretary Clinton's top advisor was allowed to review and suggest changes to the ARB report before the public ever, ever saw it. No transcript of the ARB interviews. You can't know whether relevant questions were asked and answered. No transcript. It's impossible to cite ARB interviews with any specificity at all. That's not independent. That's not accountability. That's not serious. Here's what's clear in all of this. And we'll get to some full coverage here, you know, throughout the show. But we also have other issues to get to. Newt Gingrich, Paul Ryan, Joe Biden, out, all the other news of the day. But, you know, Republicans... They, I know they take heat because the Democrats lie, 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 obfuscate, obfuscate, delay, 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 delay. They got 1,300 pages of Ambassador Stevens' emails Tuesday. Today's Thursday. Now, they could just say, forget it. It's not worth the political price of getting to the – there's four dead Americans. They could have they, – they, they could have just abandoned all the political heat they didn't. I give them credit. Hillary Clinton was the key architect of this disaster. In Libya, she provide, did not provide the security before. She was too busy answering Sid Vicious's emails. Stand down order was given by somebody. She said she accepts responsibility. Well, then that would be on her based on her accepting responsibility. She knew it wasn't related to a YouTube video, and she said it repeatedly, but she lied to you, the American pe people. She knowingly misled this country, lied to this country blaming it on a video when she, in fact, was saying it wasn't a video, that these were Islamic terrorists. Now, the reason this is necessary, this is congressional oversight. I've been critical of Republicans, especially lately. I applaud them for doing their institutional and civic duty today. And all these liberals who insist Hillary's great, great, great. Really? Great? 600 requests for security? And not one of them ended up on her desk, but all of Sid Vicious Blumenthal's emails end up on her desk. This is a good day for Hillary when we discovered that she told people this was an Islamic terror attack and told the American people something else. That's not a good day for her. You know, the majority of you don't think about the IRS till April 15th rolls around.